Yeah, yeah, a fine please. space and tangent. Yes, yeah, we'll discuss that. Only that question, madam, last one. Okay, thank you. So, Ma'am, will you please explain uh, week and nine concepts uh, in uh, somewhat in detail, uh, details? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just one second. I'll just stop, update the YouTube link and then we'll start. With the YouTube link on the calendar and then, yeah. Okay. So. Ma'am, is this huh. the third session? No, this is the fourth session. The third session was in Hindi by a TA. So that was not streamed. It was Hindi, right? It was a doubt session. Means huh. it is continuation of that V7. No, no, we will... We will I mean, this session is the continuation. Session. We will continue. This is a continuation of revision session two. Yeah, yeah. There, sir. Okay, total affine space, I guess. Yeah. So we will start with inner products. Do you okay. want uh, to discuss inner products, or shall we go off to multivariable calculus? Ma'am, no, we can go to multivariable. Okay. Part. Yeah, it is okay as well. Yeah. And if in time, if time permits, then we can do about projections. Ah, yeah. So if there is time, we'll come back to that. Otherwise, you can just go back and watch uh, those weak videos because all mm. this was uh, discussed in detail there, right? Okay. Yeah. So uh, in multivariable calculus, uh, just one second. Uh, So, uh, in multivariable calculus, what is a multivariable function? Where the domain yeah, is uh, more than, uh, I mean, it, it can't be R only. Ah. So, we, yes, uh, we have a function which is dependent on at least two variables, right? More than one variable. That is why it is a multivariable function. So, the domain of the function that we are going to consider is going to be a subset of Rn, where n is greater than 1. And it is said to be a scalar valued multivariable function if the output is going to be a scalar. That is, it's going to be a real number. So this is a scalar valued multivariable function. And it is said to be vector valued if the output is going to be a vector, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we have scalar valued multivariable functions and vector valued multivariable functions. Uh, what we predominantly study is uh, scalar valued uh, because, and mostly we see examples from R2 to R because we can see the graph of this function, right? We can see, plot it in 3D, right? So mostly uh, this is the type of functions uh, we study, but uh, in general, we have the two types the scalar valued multivariable functions and the vector valued multivariable functions uh, so these functions behave like single variable functions only just that their domain and codomain uh, are in higher dimension so you can add two functions of this uh, uh, two functions from the same like f from r2 to, to r and g from r2 to, to r if you have something like this you can add two functions subtract them uh, and then uh, what you can uh, like what do you mean by multiplication? Can you do um, f of x comma y into g of x comma y? No, ma'am. In this case, you can do because the codomain is r, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma when the codomain is r, you can talk about multiplication. Otherwise, what does multiplication mean? In r2, we don't have... Uh, when we say multiplication of two vectors in r2, what is that multiplication? How is that defined? Scalar multiplication. Uh, no, like you can Component do, wise you can do ah, you can do result. anything, right? There is no universal one way of multiplying two vectors in R2. So when we talk about uh, multiplication of vectors, that's ambiguous. What kind of product are we looking at? So in that case, we F cross G doesn't make sense. Well, actually, cross product is not covered now here. No, no yeah. 
yeah we are interested only in scalar products means the product where the output is a scalar right so that's why only that was covered and uh, see why we covered dot product is because we can compute the directional derivative as uh, del f dot u right that is why dot product yes, was covered yeah okay uh so yeah we can do all the algebra algebraic operations on uh, multivariable functions as well and then uh, we discussed about the partial derivatives the directional derivatives and all that right so how will you find the partial derivative what is the partial derivative let's transpose the derivative along with x axis and y axis it is uh, ah. is the rate of change of function with respect to any one uh, variable yes so let's henceforth consider f of x comma y that is a function of two variables so that is easy for us to discuss so when we talk about partial derivative it is the derivative of this function the rate of change of this function with respect to one of the two variables here we have two variables so one of the two variables like that for each variable i can uh, define a partial derivative so i will have fx of x comma y which is the rate of let me write rate of change of f along x axis and uh, fy the partial derivative with respect to y represents the same but it's the rate of change along the y axis so the direction alone is different uh, so this is the rate of change of the function along x axis and this is the rate of change of the function along y axis and how do we compute it what is fx at a comma b limit we differentiate keeping one constant limit ah. h tends to 0 f of a comma b plus h into no, e1 a plus h comma b b plus h comma b yes ma'am that's what i am saying a plus b plus h into e1 y. minus ah, okay. f of a, a comma b by h yeah ah right yeah so you can write it that way as well so you can write it as limit h goes to 0 f of a comma b plus h into e1 that is 1 comma 0 along the direction of the x axis so we will take a unit vector in the direction of x axis minus f of a comma b by h so <coughs> this is the partial derivative of the function f with respect to uh, x fine so um, uh so what is this uh, here you can see that there is a change only in the x component there is no change in the y component and uh, there is change only in the x component right so that is the rate of change um uh, with respect to x that is along the x axis if i want to compute the partial derivative with respect to y there will be change only in the y component and the x component along the x component there won't be any change right so this is going to be limit h goes to 0 f of a comma b plus h minus f of a comma b by h so this is going to be the partial derivative with respect to y where the change happens only in the y component the x component remains the same so as someone pointed out uh, partial derivatives can be easily computed by keeping all the other variables constant so if i want to calculate fx uh, the partial derivative with respect to x i will keep all the other variables constant and uh, differentiate with respect to x the usual derivative with respect to x and for fy we'll keep all the other variables constant and differentiate the usual derivative we will find the usual derivative with respect to y alone we will treat it as a function of y and then differentiate it with respect to y fine ma'am uh, ha huh. is this the partial derivative uh, along the positive uh, x axis so uh, yeah because we take the vector 1 comma 0 right yes ma'am you can also calculate like you you have that left hand derivative means when oh, does this oh, limit exist means 
Okay. Means, left uh, hand limit and right hand limit should exist, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Means, so uh, both are taken both, care of. Okay. Both has to be the same, right? Yeah. This is okay. a limit of one variable, right? H is a number, right? It's a real number. It's not a vector. Yes. Yeah. H times 1 comma 0. A comma B plus H comma 0. This is A plus H comma 0, right? A so plus H comma 0. The second one is here written formula for along with unit vector. Huh. This is how okay. we write the par directional derivative formula, okay. right? Okay. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Ma'am, then we will write minus 1 comma 0. What? Here? Yeah, instead of 1 comma 0, when we will write 1 uh, minus 1 comma 0. Okay, so this limit that we are calculating, it is a one variable limit, right? H is, yeah. H is not a vector, it's a number, right? So this is one variable calculus, right? This limit is one variable calculus, right? So in one variable calculus, how will you calculate limit? And there is some disturbance from your end, I guess, or anyone else. The voice is breaking a bit. Is my voice breaking for everyone? And your voice is no, okay, my voice but... is not breaking, but some uh, there is some noise background is noise. Yeah. yeah, there is some background noise. I can also hear the background noise. So uh, then, ma'am, it's from anyone. I mean, not I'll from your side. I'll and then we'll check. Ah, now I cannot hear any background. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. So how will we calculate this limit? When will we say that this limit exists? Or forget all this. When will we say limit x goes to uh, 0, uh, x squared exists? When, when LHD... When the lip Yes, ma'am. LHL, LHL, LHL goes to RHL basically. Uh -huh. So limit x goes to 0 plus and limit x goes to 0 minus. Both should exist and they should be equal. That is when this limit exists, right? And function value should also be equal to limit. Yes, that is for continuity. I am just talking about limits. Okay. Uh -huh. so then, ma'am, there happens, might be some cases where uh, uh, here you actually you are checking for the right hand limit right huh. when you take one zero no 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 uh, no that's what i'm telling so when you do in one variable case this is what you do right yes yes ma'am i this one zero doesn't mean i am considering only positive x-axis i'm telling means it is along the entire line so okay this is my x-axis right so h goes to zero means I will do h goes to 0 from this side as well as this side, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so that's taking care of both directions, right? Ma'am, then why not minus 1, comma 0? Are both are right or, uh, or 1, comma 0 is only right? So we usually take the positive direction. Means span of, what is span of 1, comma 0? X axis, right? Yes, the entire X axis. Uh -huh. So that is taken care of, right? The entire X axis is taken care of with this one vector, right? This is the usual notation that will that is followed. I mean, see, if you're going to put minus also, it's okay, right? Because the right hand limit will take care of the positive value and the left hand limit will take care of the negative value and all that, right? Does that make sense? Means left hand limit and right hand limit, both we are going to evaluate, right? So it's going to be taken care here. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Fine. Um, yes, so we have the partial derivatives 
and uh, how do we compute them we know the, all that and then uh, uh, keeping one variable constant you differentiate with respect to the other variable and calculate the partial derivatives all that is done how will we calculate the directional derivative you will have to use the limit uh, you will use the same formula this version of the formula we will use where instead of 1 comma 0 we'll have this direction right yes ma'am yes, yes ma'am so if you have some direction first you will find the unit vector along that direction right yes ma'am yeah and then you will apply to that formula so limit h goes to 0 f of a plus a comma b plus u let's assume u is a unit vector so it's going to be plus u so u will have two components u1 u2 minus f of a comma uh, into a. h ma'am u1 oh, u2 oh, h yeah. plus h into u1 comma u2 minus f of a comma b divided by h so this is going to be the directional derivative of this function at the point a comma b along the direction u along the unit vector u so if you are asked to calculate the directional derivative you first have to compute the unit vector in that direction and then apply this formula fine Ma'am, can you please solve an example yeah there is one question in the mock paper right yeah i'll take the mock um, this huh. is uh, an explanatory formula, but in while solving fast-paced question, is it necessary or is it needed to use? No, you can use the gradient version, dot products of the gradient with the unit vector, okay. as long as the gradient is continuous. If the gradient is not continuous, you cannot do that, right? Yeah, but then the gradient have... means uh, every component of that gradient vector has to be continuous, right? Right. right. Okay, continuous at uh, that point. Suppose yes. we are checking for a comma b. Hmm. So then it has to be continuous at, at a that comma point. B. Yeah. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, continuous means it has to be differentiable. I mean, f x and f y should exist. Ah, first of all, it should exist. Otherwise, the gradient does not even exist. No. Only if it exists, we can talk about. Uh, um. Ma'am, how to check that ma'am gradient exists or not? Ah, yeah, we'll do all that. We'll first do okay. the thirteenth okay. problem from mock. Okay. F of x comma y, x y, x squared plus y squared. So this problem. X y by x squared plus y squared. When x y is not equal to zero, and zero when x y is equal to zero. So the question is. Uh, Partial derivative of f exists everywhere. f x does not exist at the origin. f y does exist at the origin. Directional derivative along the vector 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 does not exist. Okay, fine. So, um, how will we calculate f x of 0, 0? In fact, they have asked for every point. So, let us find f x of x, y. How will we find this? Through axis through one of the axes only, we, we can solve it. Exactly. When, when x comma y is, is not equal to 0, 0, ah. then we can uh, just uh, put that formula. Ah. That, uh, yeah, long y is equal to mx. No? Right. So, no, when, when, if, uh, y when x constant. comma y is not equal to 0, you can yes, just use uh, this formula and do the usual partial derivative, how we find, right? Yes, ma'am. Why is that the case? Y is constant, yeah. Because denominator is not zero, right? Yeah, there is no problem with this function, right? X is a nice function, Y is a nice function, X squared is a nice function, Y squared is a nice function. You are adding two nice functions, you are multiplying two nice functions and then dividing them. So the this one is a nice function as long as we are away from zero. So when we have to find out the partial derivative with respect to uh, X or with respect to Y, Away from 0, you can just use the usual uh, method of finding the partial derivative by differentiating this and all that. So, maybe we will just do fx of x comma y when uh, x comma y is not equal to 0. So, some point a comma b 
where a comma b is not equal to 0. What happens to this? It's just going to be x. You'll apply the u by v rule, right? Denominator yes, square. Yes, ma'am. Denominator ma into the derivative of the numerator with respect to x. So that's y minus the numerator into the derivative of the denominator with respect to x. So that's 2x. So this is x squared y. Here we have 2x squared y. So minus x Man, squared that y. That should be 2y, right? Where? Oh, we are okay. differentiating okay. with respect okay. to x, right? Huh. Okay. Minus x squared y plus y squared into y divided by x squared plus y squared whole squared. So this can be written as y into y squared minus x squared divided by x squared plus y squared the whole squared. So I know that the partial derivative with respect to x exists if it is away from 0. What happens at 0? What is fx of 0, 0? Can I do this and then substitute 0, 0? No, ma'am. No, no, no. You can because use I'll have limit, 0 uh, by no. 0 form, right? Yes. And I cannot uh, just differentiate this also, right? I cannot differentiate 0 and say 0 is the answer, right? That is also not yes, okay. Yeah. No, no. Because when we are talking about the partial derivative, we are also interested in what happens nearby, the rate of change. So not just at that point. We are interested in seeing what happens nearby that point. So everything uh, matters. So in this case, we will use the limit definition. Limit as h goes to 0, f of uh, 0 plus h, comma 0 minus f of 0, 0 divided by h. What is f of 0, 0? It's 0. Yeah. And what is f of h, comma 0? That will also give 0. Yeah. I will use this formula. But because the y component there is 0, when I substitute here, I'm going to get 0. Right? Yes, ma'am. So I'll get limit as h goes to 0, 0 minus 0 or 0 by h. So this is equal to 0. So the partial derivative with respect to x exists everywhere. When it is not equal to 0, I have already shown the lim uh, partial derivative exists. When it is equal to 0 also, we have computed the limit and shown that it exists. So the partial derivative exists everywhere. And uh, you can also calculate Fy similarly. What we get for Fy, you can calculate similarly. And then you can check that that also exists. Ma'am, the C A comma B not equal to 0, 0 will give positive value. Correct, ma'am? Why positive value? Depends because... on what A and B is, right? Yeah, it should take only positive value, no, ma'am? It won't take negative value. No, why? No, okay. So here I made a mistake at a comma b. So I have to evaluate this at a comma b, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah, so if b is greater than a or a uh, a is greater than b, then this term is going to be negative, right? Okay. So if the okay, ma'am. Ah, say for example, we calculate at uh, uh, what uh, a is greater than b. So two comma one. If I calculate at two comma one, it's going to be y is one. 1 squared minus 2 squared divided by 1 squared plus 2 squared whole squared, right? So this is yes, negative, right? Okay. Then the value should be same, no, ma'am, for uh, 0, 0, and not equal to 0, 0. It no, why should like it that? be the same? If the limit exists means then it should be same for all, no, ma'am? That's No, 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 no. Limit exists means what? Limit f x means limit fx exists is not what you're looking at, right? You're, you're asking whether fx at 0, 0 exists or not, right? Okay, madam. So fx is a function. fx is a function which is defined like this. When x comma y is not equal to 0, 0, you get this value. Yes, and then when, FX, uh, when x comma y is equal to 0, 0, you get 0. Okay, madam. So, no need to be same value. Ah, like this. Understood. That. Something like this. Okay. Ma'am, could you explain that step, ma'am? When a, b not equal to 0, 0, what you did there? I did the usual partial derivative. Means uh, how we usually do partial derivative. Keep y constant and differentiate with respect to x, right? 
तो हाउ न्यूमरेटर मैम इन न्यूमरेटर इट्स कम मैम x2 plus y2 you are... i've applied u by v rule this is u by v right the function is of the form u by v quotient rule i've differentiated this function with respect to x using the quotient rule because x is there in the numerator and denominator right uh but ma'am then uh, at this uh, stage the third step you have mentioned that at point a comma b ah uh. so there we are putting a b equals to 0 0 right no 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 see if a comma b is so both a and b are equal to 0 and z, both yes, are equal yes. to 0 and hence we can't I, use that right huh. directly i yes. get 0 by 0 form in which case i cannot use that formula Yeah, so then in the next stage where we use the definition h tends mm. to zero limit h tends to zero. Huh. So I am just confused that uh, how could we get this limit h tends to zero equal to zero by h? Uh, like uh, that's because I have substituted. I have to check what is f of where h comma exactly zero. Exactly, we substituted right? this value, ma'am. What is f mm. of h comma zero? It is the value of the function f. Function keeping y zero. value zero and x by h, right? Yeah, here Make is the right? function. Okay, okay. So we are just substituting x by h and y by zero, right? In the given yes. function only. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Ma'am, but when ma the uh, partial uh, derivative doesn't exist, ma'am, what? How do we conclude exist? that one? The partial derivative does not exist. No, no, they, they exist. No, what is the yeah, problem? Yeah, here, okay, ma'am. I'm huh. just asking you when we when the partial derivative doesn't exist. When one of the uh, means either mm -hmm. you do this and then it doesn't exist. The, in this case, there shouldn't be any problem. Yeah. But if this limit didn't exist, for example, or some infinity or something, ha, huh, yeah, okay, okay. Say for example, you had one uh, by h instead. Hmm. Then in this case, the limit yeah, is infinity. One by zero, so which is infinity. Ha. Okay. Huh. Okay, madam. But ma'am, uh, if we put zero zero in the uh, y into y square minus x square upon x square plus y square, then we are getting not defined. Then why should not we say partial derivative is not defined? No, no. See, getting zero by zero does not mean that the limit does not exist. This just says that you cannot stop here. You have to try other means. You cannot proceed with this direction. You have to take another path to solve the limit. That's why it's called an indeterminate form. indeterminate means you cannot determine anything from there but and madam in the f of xy is equal to 0 when xy is equal to 0 0 in that d by dx of 0 is equal to 0 we can't say that no see when you are calculating fx you are calculating limit h goes to 0 f of h comma 0 at 0 0 only let's say Minus f of zero zero by h. So you are interested in points around zero, right? You are just not considering at zero, right? What is happening around zero also matters, right? Because this h is non-zero here, right? Yes. So in this case. you cannot just use this zero right because this talks only about at zero this is not around zero right okay but for for around zero that xy not equal to 0 0 is there for around zero uh, that uh, first one x comma y not huh. equal to 0 0 that is around 0 0 that is not around 0 0 that is away from 0 0 i am talking about any point away from the origin say for example if i take this point what should i do i will be looking at all the values around this point right yes so around this point at any point is this function going to take the value zero no no that is what right okay even if i take a point close to the origin my h is tending to zero no so i can draw a small circle such that the circle is away from the origin right yes so in that case also i am not why, involving this value mam why did we differentiate with respect to x only because i am finding fx oh partial derivative we, with respect to uh, x in basically this function whatever is it it 
uh, it is defined only at means it can be differentiated only at x-axis and y-axis respectively, right? Yeah, we if have it, to check if along other directions we can differentiate or not. Means in the sense, uh, because it is a separated function, so I think it won't be. No, it no, not, not necessarily like that. Generally, sir has repeatedly warned his you know, in his recessions in his videos that by showing the no, same. These are the kind of see if it was not a separated function, if it was something like this, <laughs> then this is continuous everywhere, differentiable everywhere, no problem at all, right? Yeah. Ah. Means if you don't separate, you are basically considering polynomials in all the examples. At least for this course level, this is what we have considered, right? Huh. So, ma'am, uh, at at point uh, zero comma zero, uh, uh, how do you know that uh, in any direction the directional derivative exists uh, by using this uh, gradient uh, vector? No. So now, yeah, we we'll, let's get to get gradient. But before that, uh, we'll find out what is the directional derivative along this direction 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 what is the option say the directional derivative at the origin so at 0 0 so how are we going to calculate this basically we can put it in the function means that limit yes ma'am we will use ah, a limit that. formula that yeah we cannot F4. use gradient formula here ma'am no, zero, we, zero plus we haven't H even discussed two. gradient yet. I will do that after okay, this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So zero plus h by root two, comma zero plus h by root two minus f of zero zero. Right? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Why not? F of yes, f of zero yes, zero. Right. Ah, yes, yes. Ha. Right, right. Yeah. So I have to find out limit as h goes to 0, f of h by root 2, comma h by root 2, minus f of 0, 0, we know is 0. So I will ignore that, divided by h. So what is h by root 2, comma h by root 2? It is squared, squared by 2, by two. divided by it is squared by 2, plus it is squared by 2, right? Yes, ma'am. So what is what is this yes, simplified to? One by two square by two. Uh, one by right. two, ma'am. One, one by two. One by two. Yeah. Yes. So I'll get limit as h goes to zero. One by two by h, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma does this limit exist? exist? No, no ma'am. Ma so this is one by two h. This does not exist. So the partial derivative along this direction at the origin does not exist. I mean, in fact, uh, I used a simple method. I just checked it using that n. Huh? I put, means what, what? I put y equal to that mx thing. Okay. And then I solved it and saw that there is a variation that we, if we put every value of m, mm. it would differ. So there okay. is, at any point except 0, 0, it would not be, uh, this direction derivative would not exist. So, no, that see, when you put perception. y is equal to mx, you will get some limit, right? Some m times m by m squared plus 1 or something like yeah, that, Yeah, right? mx square and okay. denominator something will come. Ah, okay. So, that only says that this function is not continuous, right? That doesn't say the directional derivative does not exist, right? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I think to check the directional derivative at 0, 0, hmm. uh, we, can, we can check the fx of uh, 0 comma 0 uh, is continuous at 0 comma 0 or not yeah and similarly if y of 0 comma 0 is continuous at 0 comma 0 or not yeah so is this concept of directional derivative partial derivative clear to everyone ma'am yeah ma'am for the for the uh, checking for the limit existence uh, uh we have to uh, uh, we have to check along the x-axis, y-axis, and uh, y is equal to mx. Usually, these three curves will tell you the information. Okay. I, either uh, on the three, any any one 
if it gives the uh, if limit. these are different answers then the limit does not exist yeah okay so checking whether the limit exists or not it's a difficult process means checking proving that the limit exists is a difficult process because you have to check along infinitely many curves and uh, in this course you are not equipped to check for any function that is why there are certain types of functions which you can easily check like if i ask you whether limit um x comma y goes to 1 comma 1 x squared plus y squared exists or not you can easily tell that it exists right yes yeah, yes yes sir. because yes, you know this is a continuous function right and so the limit has to be equal to f of 1 comma 1 right yes ma'am so only these kinds of functions we have given where the limit exists if it does not exist so checking that the limit does not exist is much simpler because you just have to find two different paths along which the limits are different right so you usually try y is equal to 0 that is x axis x is equal to 0 y axis and then what y is equal to mx or depending on the function mx squared or m root x or something like that right yes yes so in this course for the knowledge of this course this much is enough usually these curves will give you the answer jeet kumar please mute yourself we have asked you many times fine so ma'am ha huh. just one question hmm. uh like el hopital theorem huh. is there any method to quickly check the existence no, there is no el uh, el hopital rule no it was for one variable huh. so two variables is there any quicker way to check no that is what makes multi variable calculus more difficult than single variable ma'am okay mm. ma'am is there any way to check for continuity yeah so continuity basically you have to evaluate the limit right you will do all this if the limit itself does not exist then it is not going to be continuous if the limit exists and it is equal to f of a comma b then the function is continuous at that point right like for example this function is not continuous right what is the limit is there any problem if the point that we are considering is away from zero so what is my f of x x y by x squared plus y squared and then zero does limit x go x comma y goes to half comma half exist or not yes ma'am exist and what is the value uh, we can simply put uh, that half comma half in the function why can we do that um because it is a continuous uh, function uh, everywhere except uh, 0 comma 0 no but we don't know no how to check continuity of multi variable functions that is why we are trying to find this limit right okay okay to finding the value limit, is 0.5 man uh, we can why why is it 0.5 how did you get that just substitute in x and y place why are you allowed to substitute because denominator is not zero. because it is not tending ah, to some zero zero, zero other than zero ma'am to find the limit of this function ah. and uh, denominator is also continuous i yeah. right. have read that uh, that is the reason okay yes, we have to check why is a continuous function x squared plus y squared is a continuous function. function and we know that when you divide two continuous functions it is going to be continuous as long as the denominator is not equal to zero right okay ma'am and that is why and because this is a continuous function i know that the limit has to be equal to the value of the function right because yes ma'am this function yes, is continuous yes ma'am that is why but at zero i cannot follow this procedure because the denominator is becoming zero at this point zero so at zero i have to go to other methods to find whether limit x comma y goes to 0 0 f of x comma y exists or not so for this what do you think will the limit exist yes what no. happens along x axis ma'am limit uh, doesn't exist here along x axis what is the limit zero ma'am it will be zero zero ah. along, along y, y axis, axis it is also zero, zero. it's also zero. zero and along y is equal to x it is not One by two. It is not two. Yes. Ah, you're going to get some value. Ah, which yeah, is not equal to. Will be one by two. Yeah. So, uh, 
in whatever path along whatever path i approach 0 0 i should get the same value only then this limit exists just like in one variable calculus how we calculate left hand limit right hand limit only if those two are equal the limit exists like that in multivariable calculus i have a point and around that point all the values should be closer and closer to the value of the function all the values should get mapped to values closer to f of 0 0 so for that to approach this point i can come along any path there are infinitely many directions to approach this point so along all those directions only if the limit is equal all the limits are equal the limit will exist so if i have found two paths along which the limits are not equal so that there it stops right that the limit does not exist ma'am if it is okay if we check minimum three ma'am suppose uh, for some functions if we check for y is equal to x uh, x axis y axis y is x uh, not exists I mean, x is 0, 0, 0. But mm -hmm. if you check for y is equal to 2x or something, then the value will exist. So, different value you will get. So, at what extent, ma'am, we have to go for checking? 3 is enough or we have to go for some more? Uh, so, there was a question on this in this course. Okay. So, let me just check what is the topic. I have posted a video, uh, the last uh, terms uh, session. It was like... Uh, a cheat code kind of like when the function okay. looks like this try this curve sure sure ma'am please forward uh, this course it's available ma'am now yeah, yeah and then i replied only today morning or yesterday evening at most so okay, it's not an old that. post as well okay you can just check that thank you thank you ma'am yeah maybe something like limits of multivariable function or something like that okay ma'am i will check i will check ma'am uh, Yes. Uh, in this uh, function, though the uh, limit does not exist at the origin, but uh, that partial derivative exists at the origin. Yes, yes, exactly. It can this function is not continuous at the origin, but the partial derivatives exist there. Right? Uh, if the limit does not exist, then directional derivative will exist, ma'am. No, see, means you cannot tell anything directly from there, okay. So, we already calculated that one of the directional derivatives does not exist, right? This one, along this direction. Yes, ma'am. Along y is equal to x, we already know that the directional derivative does not exist. Right? So, what was the question? If the limit does not exist, then uh, directional derivative may or may not exist. No? Yeah, means even if the limit exists, there is no guarantee that all these are going to exist. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this is partial derivative, directional derivative and all that. And then we have the gradient of the function. What is this gradient vector? Madam means partial derivative, directional derivative, and continuity are independent of each other. Ah, yeah, existence, yes. Ah, okay. So delta f, the gradient function is nothing but the vector of partial derivatives. You find all the partial derivatives, put it as a vector. That is the gradient function. And uh, what is uh, why is gradient function important? To calculate the directional derivative, right? Yes, ma'am. How will we do this? A dot product with uh, the unit vector. Yeah, you will take the unit vector along the direction u and then take dot product of that with respect to the gradient, uh, means with, re with the gradient. And when can you do this? Uh, when, first of all, the gradient vector the gradient should exist, exist. Ah. and then it has to be continuous uh, around that point. Yeah. So the gradient has to be continuous at the point where you're calculating the directional derivative. So if you're going to calculate at say a comma b, so you will be doing del f at a comma b dot u. So del f at a comma b means at around a comma b, del f has to be continuous. It should be continuous at a comma b. Only then you can use this formula. So now we have got del f here, right? 
yes ma'am yeah so where, what is where, the, where? the in the previous problem we have got the directional derivative the directional derivative along x axis is partial derivative with respect to x directional derivative at y axis is partial derivative with respect to y right yes ha huh. so we have got two partial derivatives now can i compute this can i compute the directional derivative uh, at u no ma'am using uh, this because those are not continuous at uh, 0 comma 0 yes what is One not continuous n. that gradient vector the gradient ah the partial derivatives are, you have to check whether the partial derivatives are continuous or not yes, so sir. this function is this function continuous or not you have to check if it is continuous then you have to check fy if fy is also continuous then you can use this formula otherwise you cannot use this formula but most of the problems that we uh, deal with are all polynomials so they are continuous everywhere nice functions so you in most of the cases you can do this right ma'am can you take a small example example yeah, ma yeah. Yes. i was opening mock we will see if there's something ma'am you can take that example this only ma'am yes, ma'am easy example can you take uh, uh there was some directional derivative question in the mock right no, that question was there previous question there was some option Ah, but the directional derivative does not exist there. No, yeah. Means the partial derivatives are not continuous there, so you cannot use that formula. Okay, maybe we'll just take a simple example then. Ma'am, like you told, like uh, for using that formula, you, uh, the function should be continuous. The partial derivative should be continuous, and the uh, uh, even the gradient has to be continuous, right? Yeah, the gradient is continuous. Means both the partial derivatives should be continuous. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. So say for example, f of x comma y is x cube minus y squared plus two y. So what is f x here? Three x square only. Three x square. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a continuous function? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. F y is minus two y plus two. Plus two. Is this a continuous function? Yes, ma'am. So this gradient. is continuous at all points right yes ma'am yeah you take any a comma b the gradient is continuous so if i want to calculate the directional derivative of this function along any direction at the point a comma b i can always use this formula right yes ma'am so suppose i want to compute along the direction 1 by root 2 1 by root or let me write 1 comma 1 Of f at two comma one, what will I do? Uh, you will find uh, gradient Three of f at uh, two comma one ah. dot with one by root two comma one by root. Yeah, so you will take the one unit one vector ah one comma one divided by norm of one comma one. So that's going to give me root two. So one by root two comma one by root two. Del f at two comma one means f x at two comma one. F y at two comma one. So f x at two comma one is two squared four twelve, right? F x at two comma one, comma f y at two comma one, right? Ma'am, here we always take the dot product, no normal. Yeah, yeah. This is dot product. This is the dot product. Yes, yes. Twelve comma zero. Twelve comma zero is it? Two comma one. Twelve by root two. Ah, fine. One by root two, one by root two. So the answer is going to be twelve by root two. So six root two. Six root two. So the directional derivative of this function can be computed using this because the gradient is continuous at the point two comma one. Otherwise, you cannot do this. Like for example, in the previous case, the previous case, both f x and f y existed. So, if suppose I had taken the directional derivative using this formula, I would have got some answer like this, right? Some number I would have got, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but then that's not happening, right? 
because the function is not continuous the gradient is not continuous at the origin so we couldn't use this formula to compute the directional derivative does that make sense yes ma'am ma'am what you say at origin ma'am will you please repeat the last line you said yeah so in this previous problem do you agree that the directional derivative along 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 does not exist yes ma'am yes ma'am suppose i was using this formula i would have written that as uh, what is that uh, f 1 by uh, d root 2 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 of f at 0 0 would have been fx at 0 0 comma fy at 0 0 dot 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 right yes ma'am yes ma'am this fx at 0 0 we calculated it to be 0 right yes ma'am similarly fy at 0 0 also you would have got 0 0 so the answer is 0 right yes ma'am yes but ma we just showed that it does not exist right so what is the problem The problem is you cannot use this formula at all. You can use it only if the gradient is continuous. It's continuous. Yeah, ah. it is not continuous. Okay, at 0, 0. Okay. So you will get a wrong answer if you use this formula when the gradient is not continuous. Okay, okay, madam. So first you have to make sure that you are not allowed to do this. So first you have to make sure that the gradient is continuous. Only then you can use this formula. Sure, ma'am. Fine. And then. Uh, Ma'am. Ma huh? uh, for the gradient to be continuous, it doesn't mean like uh, if y, uh, fx and fy has to be equal. It can be different, right? They can be anything. They just have to be continuous functions. That's all. Yeah, that has to, uh, that has to be, uh, that, that uh, differential has to be, uh, that has to exist. It should exist and it should be continuous. That is limit x comma y goes to a comma b f x of x comma y should be equal to f x at a comma b only then it is continuous right yes ma'am the limit yes, should be equal to the value of the function only then it okay. is continuous okay ma'am yeah so is there any doubts week 9 No, ma'am. Okay. So, what is this uh, direction of steepest descent, steepest ascent, and all that? Maximum and minimum value, ma'am. Huh? Ascent means max. Ah, yeah. So, you're going to try to you're trying to find the maximum directional derivative and the minimum directional derivative and the direction in which that happens, right? So, what is the maximum directional derivative? Gradient. Norm uh, of development. The norm no, of the gradient. No. Norm of yes, the gradient. Along the length, length of uh, it is plus. direction of unit vector. Ah, yeah. And then the minimum is going to be minus of minus this. of norm of development. And what is the direction in which this happens? Uh, maximum is uh, along the direction of unit vector. Minimum is just opposite. Unit vector Both means you mean this, right? Unit vector along the direction of del f. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma yeah. So the maximum direction, the uh, direction where the maximum occurs is along the direction of the unit vector. And the direction where minimum happens is uh, the opposite side. This is max. It is normal to the side. surface, no, ma'am? Huh. Yeah. Ma'am, can you please repeat? Uh, so, you are trying to find the maximum directional derivative, right? So, you will yes, calculate del f. Del f is what? Uh, okay. Fx and Fy. Not del f. D u f. You are trying to find the maximum, the direction along which this value is maximum, right? Yes, ma'am. So you are actually calculating del f dot u. Let's assume all functions are continuous. So mm -hmm. you are actually calculating del f dot u, right? Yes, ma'am. So this is going to be dot product. A yes, 
norm A, norm B into cos theta, the angle between them, right? Yes, ma'am. A yes, dot ma B, A into B cos theta, mod A mod B cos theta. So when is this the maximum? This is a, uh, some non-negative number. This is some non-negative number. These are all fixed values, right? Mm. Yes. It is going to be maximum based on theta. Theta, okay. Whenever cos theta is 1. Cos theta maximum can be 1, right? Yes, ma'am. And minimum can be minus, minus one. 1. So the minimum is going to be when theta, cos theta is minus 1. That is when theta is pi, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Cos ma theta is minus 1 here. And when theta is 0, cos theta is 1. Right? Yes, ma'am. And u is already a unit vector. So this is going to be 1, right? Mm. So the maximum directional derivative is going to be this. And the minimum directional derivative is going to be this, right? Ah, okay. This is the, but you were saying something on the statement, no, and that's why I confused. Okay. This is okay, ma'am. What is the statement that you got confused with? But uh, no, actually, I want to repeat that, but that's okay. Man. That's what I couldn't able to. Oh, okay. Fine. Now, now is it is clear? clear? This one is clear. <laughs> yeah, this is clear. Uh, now, what you say, uh, delay upon uh, norm of uh, delay? No, I'm writing A dot B is equal to mod A mod B cos theta. This formula I'm using. This is the formula for dot product, right? Yes. Cross product means you will write mod A mod B sin theta, right? Okay. Ah, that formula I have used here. No, no, above in this uh, max, uh, maximum you are saying that uh, norm of delay and delay for only norm of uh, delay. Uh, what? Del F of? Uh, no, no. You have written formula. For minimum, what we have to do? For minimum, it's just going to be the negative of that. Ma'am, can okay. we take like this, ma'am, that for finding partial derivative of fx and fy and finding the length of it, square root on the square? Ah, yeah. Ah. The gradient is just that, right? The vector of okay. partial derivative. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, yes, ma uh, in between, someone said that uh, it is... Uh, uh, normal to the surface. Uh, ah, what was the that? gradient is normal to the surface. Gradient is like derivative, no, for us. Okay. Ah. Okay, and then uh, what after gradient, steepest ascent? Ah, tangents. Tangents and man, linear approximation. That part. Yeah. Tangent line, tangent plane, linear approximation. What is the equation of the tangent line? x of t is equal to a plus a plus t into u1 a plus t u1 ah so if and u is u1 u2 and we are trying to find the tangent at the point a comma b okay what is this t parameter i guess ah yeah you're trying to generate a line right yes ma'am that's why you can put any value for t yeah it's going to generate the span. Well, span what is this length. difference between equation of tangent line and normally tangent line? Means simple tangent line and equation of tangent line. No, tangent line means it's a line. When you write it like this, you're writing down its equation. That's all. This is no, the but tangent there is line. Equation so is written in that y minus 0, y minus y naught equal to mx minus x naught means that's this for plane. 3D form. Ah, that 3D is the equation okay that then, is hyperplane so, that is plane ma'am no are you talking about one variable means y minus no no ma'am i ah. i learned it by extending one variable to two variables but ah. i i couldn't get the sense of this tangent line because i need to refer to that 3d geometry ah. where so you coordinates have a, were used ah. so you have a curve and then you draw, a, this is the tangent, right? Yes. And that the was equation in one variable. of the tangent, yeah, the equation of the tangent is y minus y naught at whatever point it is, is equal to slope of the tangent. That is the derivative, right? Yeah. x minus x naught. So this is how you found the equation of the tangent line in one variable. Correct. When it comes to two variables, means if you're having a function of two variables, I'm going to have a surface, right? Some surface I'm going to have. 
Correct. The graph of the function is going to be a surface. So when I talk about tangent, it's going to be a tangent plane, right? Yeah. At one point, if I'm trying to look for a tangent, there are so many, infinitely many directions, right? But ma'am, in 3D, for finding tangent line, we need direction ratios and direction cosines as well. Here we have computed it directly. No, these are the direction ratios. U1, U2 and the directional derivative at A comma B in the direction U1, U2. Those are your direction ratios. Okay. Okay. Fine. So the equation of the tangent line is x of t is equal to a plus t u1, y of t is equal to b plus t u2. And what is z of t going to be equal to? f of a b plus yeah, the value of your function. Because z of t means you are looking at the curve or the surface. So it's going to be f of a comma b plus t times f u of a comma b. Ah, okay f u of a comma b so the directional derivative along the direction u the given direction at the point a comma b so this is the tangent line so Man, i this is for is non -implicit which one uh, this one right yes ma'am huh this is del f dot u del f del this f. is the directional derivative yes, at the yeah ma'am i have not learned uh, this way actually i hope this is what you were writing is for non implicit function Okay. What happens if it's implicit function? Uh, that's uh, directly we take the gradient and... Uh, this is the gradient go. dot u, right? The directional yes. derivative is gradient dot u. Gradient at a comma b dot u. This one. Directional derivative is nothing but this, right? Yes, ma'am. I have a question, ma'am. Huh. Ma'am, this is a line in uh, 3D, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you take another line, x of t is equal to t u1, y of t is equal to t u2. Mm. Similarly, z of t is equal to uh, t of this. T of, okay. yeah. huh. Then, this line is parallel to that line or not? Uh. This uh, tangent line is parallel to that line or not yes because i can write x so x comma y comma z x of t comma y of t comma z of t as a comma b comma c okay a comma b comma f of a b plus t times u1 comma u2 comma f u at a comma b okay right? so the second so, line is uh, passing through origin right this one yes Yes, ma'am. Okay, so then similarly, if you take any line, x of t is equal to uh, c plus, let's say c, where c belongs to real number, huh. uh, c plus t of u1, uh, huh. and y of t is equal to, uh, if you take any line, like d plus t of u2, huh. and uh, e plus, okay. Yes, ma'am. Huh. Then this line is also parallel to the tangent line or not? Yeah, this is like the affine space, no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're trying to shift. You're yes, translating a line passing through the origin to some other point. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Then this line uh, is also parallel to the tangent line, right? Yes. Then, ma'am, uh, I have it out in more. Oh, wait, question. wait, wait. Which line? This is parallel to the tangent line you're saying. Yes, ma'am. No, 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 not necessarily. See, even in two variable, no? Suppose you have a line like this. Uh, okay. Say y is equal to x. So this is x of t is t. Uh, y of t is... Okay, this is also going to be t. So let's say... X this, uh, this third line is parallel to the... Uh, to that so this line, line uh, to this of... portion... Yes, huh. ma'am. Not then, to the entire line. Okay, then if it is parallel to that line, huh. that uh, line passing through origin, huh. and uh, we 
we just have solved that uh, this our tangent line is also parallel to the line that passing through origin then how can it not be parallel to the uh, tangent line if a is parallel to b and b is parallel to c then a has to be parallel to c na wait one second yeah makes sense uh, so first you're shifting this to this okay and uh, you're shifting this to this okay fine but uh, why did i say no suppose i have a line like this Hmm. This is parallel. Means what was the question? No, the question is: is if I have a line with these equations, is it parallel to the tangent line? Yeah, it will be parallel, right? Because these are the direction ratios, right? Yes. And the direction ratios are the same, so they will be parallel. Because the subspaces right? that yeah, line is passing through are the same, right? Flat, right? isn't it? Yeah. What is? Yeah. It? What is it? The T U the T U port the T U one T U two T U three are like an affine flats. So if yes. we shift yes. it by C D on or E, then it should be parallel to the tangent lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, I have a doubt in mock question. Huh. Uh, this similar to this. Okay. So. Which uh, question? Uh, I don't know. Let me just uh, give me one minute. I think it was a comprehension way. One. Yes, ma'am. With the tangent, with affine, yeah. I think. So all the tangents, affines, planes, everything ah. is there. Nineteenth question. Yes, ma'am. That only I ask you. Ah, we'll do that. Yes. I think it would. It is a doubt of majority. So if you take it afterwards, it would be okay. Yeah, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yeah, do you we'll cover do that after discussing today? tangent uh, planes? Ah, what is it? Week eight, do you cover um, that um, today? Question number twelve, I have doubt. Yeah, the we'll do question twelve. Week eight uh, was already covered, right? Only inner product was remaining. Ah, oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. Projection ma also is there, ma'am. Ma ah, we'll do that quickly. Okay, okay, ma'am. Ma'am. Ha. Ma'am, why is that uh, revision session three is not available on YouTube and the link is not available on the calendar? uh that's because it was not streamed at all um uh, it was um what in hindi so oh, okay yeah that's why and anyway this session is a continuation of uh, session 2 so there's yeah, nothing you're going to miss it. yeah ma'am that question 12 is uh, similar ah. to this uh, what i have just asked you okay yes so, ma'am share my screen so this is the function given okay fine you are looking for the tangent line at the point 101 okay uh in the direction 111 is parallel to this line okay yes ma'am i am asking why option 3 is also not uh, correct i mean why it is not correct option number 3 I found that option one and three both are correct. Then why option two is not correct? Because, Because uh, U T U of T is D root three here. Oh, okay. Yes, What is U of T? Direction. Oh, uh, the direction is it? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, if option one is correct, then huh. option three has to be correct, na? The answer is uh, option one. Please note the point that it is one zero one. And zero would not come in means. And in the in the question, it's uh, asked that uh, is parallel to the line. It's hmm. not uh, asked about uh, exactly the line. Option one is exactly that tangent line. Ah. Yes. But everything should shift, right? Only shifting one point doesn't make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much sense means it should be two one two something like that. Yeah, that's what I was actually I was thinking when I was doing this also, but uh, mm, okay, but uh, 
I'll uh, co this parallel is also measured using that constant c function. We multiply everything constantly. Means everything gets multiplied or divided. So mm -hmm. adding only one doesn't make much of validation for mm. this. Okay, first uh, of all, why should this pass through the origin? And because if you put uh, t is equal to zero, then no, no, t is equal to zero is fine. Oh, uh... yes, ma'am. Oh, it's going to be a point, and then you're going to do this. Okay. Yes, ma'am. If you put t is equal to zero, it's passing through zero comma zero comma zero. Mm. But in the tangent plane, if you put t is equal to zero, it's uh, going to pass from one comma zero comma one. Okay, let's assume one comma zero. So it's going to be this line and uh, one comma one. One comma one. Say suppose it's here, then we are looking at this line. Okay. Mm. Hello. Yeah. Uh, in the in the third in the third question third the mm. one t equal to one plus t by root three that one at the point one zero one. That's why uh, I we, we can't take that one because the formula is B zero plus t by t <laughs> yes zero only one not came that the equation means formula is I have to write like y t at the point at at the point which standard line that is zero so only zero came so zero by t plus root t in the third question that that means i i am taking the uh, uh tangent line at point one 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 mm. but uh they're asking for the line parallel to right means it's parallel to they are saying they are not asking for the equation of the line right and it's also not asked that the tangent line means the given line has to pass through one zero one right ma'am then the entire line will go one unit up then it will be uh, uh, the first one will be two plus t by root three. Then only the second one can be one plus t by root three, and the uh, z of t will be two plus t by root three. Then, if only one coordinate goes up, then then it will not make any sense, right? Hmm. Then one more remark: when I find the gradient at one zero one. It is obtained as one zero one, and uh, however parallel we, we go, gradient will all it it works like a slope, mm. and it will always remain same. So one zero one will be intact, and only the value of t would go up and down. Uh, right. But what happens when the value of t goes up and down? I'm just going to be moving here this way or this way, right? Okay. Uh, so I guess we will not waste time on this. Um, for now, let's accept that this is the correct answer. The first one the is the correct one answer because it passed through 101. And, uh, and uh, 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 and uh, if there is any change, I'll put it on this course. Fine. Or even if there is no change, I will give an explanation why only the first one is right. Okay, 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 ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, also 101 means the X Z plane. So, like, how can Y coordinate, uh, uh, like... Uh, give something to it. No, no, we are no, looking no, we are... for something parallel, right? 
Yeah, so so if we put something parallel, then also it will just, you know, translate along the YZ plane. Uh, sorry, XZ plane. So the no, Y... Translate means you can shift it up also, no? This way. Means you have the XZ plane, this uh, or XY plane, for example. You can shift the plane here, no? So Z component will be something. Okay. Like x comma y comma uh, one comma one comma one. The plane passing through parallel to this, passing through this. Like you understand, z need not be equal to zero. Z is equal to yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Ha. Huh, z is equal to one. The equation is z is equal to one. Fine. Uh, so let's proceed. Tangent lines. Yeah, someone in the previous session was uh, asking uh, how did we get the symmetric form using this form or something, I guess. I don't know. I had joined in between and someone was asking that. Okay, if someone has asked that, then the answer is just that you will just calculate what is T from each of these equations and you will get the symmetric form. X minus A by U1 is equal to y minus b by u2 is equal to z minus f of a b by f this is Cartesian form, right? Ha, huh. the symmetric form. Yeah, Cartesian form. Fine. Maybe it has to be x of t minus a, right? No, see, when you keep the t, it is x of t. Otherwise, it's just some x, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, what is the tangent plane? That is uh, z minus uh, z naught is equal to uh, f of a b. Z naught is f of a b, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, is equal, equal to? to gradient of uh, uh, of f dot product with uh, x minus a comma y minus b ah, right a b right so this is the equation of the tangent plane so we'll write it as z is equal to f of a a plus uh, a comma b plus fx at a comma b into x minus a plus fy at a comma b into y minus b so this is the equation of the tangent plane and this also is the linear approximation to the surface right Yes, ma'am. To f of x comma y at the point a comma b. Because we know that the tangent is the linear approximation to the curve. Similarly, the tangent plane is the linear approximation to the surface. So when you're asked for the tangent linear approximation as well, you will use the same formula. Fine. So now I guess we are ready to solve that problem. The comprehension, right? Yes, ma'am. So, did you all look at the solution? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so Rohit, what are you trying to tell? You're trying to tell that the third option is correct, is it? Third option is wrong. Only first will be correct. At the point 101, only gradient is 101. Okay. So why are we adding that 101? We are actually using that to find the uh, direction ratios, right? Oh, no, no. No, ma'am. My simple... Uh, my simple thing is that hmm. gradients are slopes. Bas in basic language, they are the slopes. Yeah. And for parallel lines, slopes don't change. Yes. So there is no point in changing the slopes because 101 is the point at which the slope is calculated. Yeah, the slope comes from these terms, no? The terms where you have T, T. Those no, are the terms. That, was, that is direction, no? One, 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 one. Uh, 
वन बाय रूट थ्री वन बाय रूट थ्री आर डायरेक्शन मैम हम्म या 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 ओके ओके ओ देन देन इट मेक्स सेंस राइट आई वाज मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट वे ओनली ओके एंड देन एंड देन व्हाट वाज द कंफ्यूजन या सो दिस इज द डायरेक्शन फाइन how did we get that uh, 101 then oh at the point okay okay i guess i should take my mind off this for some time and then if i come back i'll it will make sense to me let's solve this problem now fine am i audible yes ma'am yeah yes, yes ma'am so we have a function the temperature at some point is given by e power x plus y plus z t1 t2 t3 be the tangent planes to this function at these three points okay so f of x comma y is square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared at the point 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 and 2 comma 2 So first, let's calculate what is t1, t2, t3. For that, first we need the partial derivatives. So f x is one by square root of nine minus x squared minus y squared, one by two, right? Power half, ah, half power minus half, right? Ma'am, whatever you are writing, it's not visible on screen, right? Ma'am, we are not sharing the screen. Yes, ma'am, it's lagging. Oh. Okay, okay. Now it was visible. then there is a lag because now i am not sharing okay let me just uh, disconnect my device and now is my screen visible yes ma'am it is visible and am i yeah, right a b yeah, yes, 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 yes 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 okay fine so this is minus x by square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared fy is similarly minus y by square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared so t1 is equation of the tangent plane at the point 1 comma 2 so z my z is equal to f of 1 comma 2 plus fx of 1 comma 2 into x minus 1 plus fy at 1 comma 2 into y minus 1 so f of 1 comma 2 ma'am it's again lagging is there too much of a lag Ma'am, when you scroll up and down, uh, it just like you know, uh, it sh it shows whatever you write. Hmm. Oh, otherwise, when I'm writing, it's not visible, is it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can scroll up and Three down. Three to four second to lag is there. Is that okay as long as the solution is clearly written? Yeah, ma'am. It's fine. Okay. f of 1 comma 2 is square root of uh, 9 minus 1 8 minus 4 4 2 right 9 yes, minus 1 yes, 2 fx at 1 comma 2 is um, 1 minus minus 1 by 2 into x minus 1 plus fy at 1 comma 2 is minus 2 By two, so that's minus one into y minus one. So that is z is equal to two minus x by two plus one by two minus y plus one. So that's let's multiply throughout by two. I'll get two z is equal to four minus x plus one minus two y plus two. so that's x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 
4 plus 2, 6 plus 1, 7. That's wrong. I think it should be 9. I remember it as 9. Uh, can someone quickly check the solution and... Minus x by 2 plus 1 by 2. Ma'am, it is minus y plus 2, ma'am. Minus... The point is 1 comma 2. F y of 1 comma 2 into y minus 2. Oh, okay. Fine. Yes, Thank you. Even in the above step also. Ma'am. Ah, 2. Yes, so this is plus 2. So this is five, plus nine. 4. Yeah, this yes. is 9. So can you similarly calculate T2 and T3? T2 is 2x plus y plus 2. Uh -huh. Is, is equal, equal to 9. nine. Yes, this is t2 and then you'll get 2x plus y plus z is equal to 9. Nine. This is t3. Okay so this is t1, t2, t3 and then I'm just can you scroll up once. Uh, scroll up in the sense this. Oh, here z was not given right. So how z came up? No, no, the equation of the tangent plane. This, right? This is the equation okay. of the tangent plane. Yeah, Z but is it equal was like t1, t2, t3 were given. So I used them. So Z was necessary to be used. No, this is the equation of the tangent plane. No, Z is equal right. to f of a comma b plus. That is Z is the variable Z. Yes, ma'am. Z is basically f of x comma y. Huh. Okay, so we have got T1, T2, T3. Next, what does it say? The set of points on each plane forms an affine subspace. Yes, T1, T2, T3, T3 are all affine spaces. Um, subspaces A1, A2, A3 respectively. Okay, so we are considering the affine spaces A1, A2, A3. So A1 is the set of all X, Y, Z such that X plus 2Y plus 2z is equal to 9. A2 is set of all x comma y comma z such that 2x plus y plus 2z is equal to 9. And A3 is set of all x comma y comma z such that 2x plus 2y plus z is equal to 9. So these are the affine spaces that we have. What are the underlying subspaces? Equal to zero equal to uh, zero. at the right side. Yeah. So V1 will be the same thing. X plus 2Y plus 2Z is equal to zero. Yes, we will bring it back to the origin. 2X plus Y plus 2Z is equal to zero. And V3 is 2X plus 2Y plus Z is equal to zero. So we have found all the things that are needed. Okay. Now we are bringing it back to zero because it uh, origin is not there only. Huh. These are the translated spaces. I want to bring it back to the subspace which passes through the origin. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what is the first question? Which of the following denotes the subspace V1 intersection V2? So how will we find out V1 intersection V2? We have to add two equations. You have to include Equate. both the equations. Uh -huh. X plus 2Y plus 2Z should also be equal to 0. And 2X plus Y, y plus, plus 2Z, 2Z should is also equal to, be equal to 0. So you have to solve these two equations and see what is the relation you get. Right? You can find yes. X from here, substitute it here, find Y. Right? Or you can do Gaussian elimination. Whichever is simpler. I will do Gaussian elimination. 1, 2, 2, 0. 2, 1, 2, 0. So this reduces to 1, 2, 2, 0. 0. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. 2 minus 4 is and Basically, this, this is the intersection of these uh, two uh, planes. Subspaces. It will be a line. No, no. We are talking about subspaces. Ah, yeah. Okay, fine. Yes. Yes, no, ma'am. This is the equation of the plane, and our intersection will give a line. Yes, yes. Uh, so, what do we get? Uh, 3y. And that's 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So, minus 2. The, the ah. 2, 3, uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, x is minus 2y. 
minus 2z y is minus 2 by 3z right so x becomes minus 2 into minus 2 by 3z minus 2z so that's 4 by 3 minus 2 minus 2 by 3z right yes ma'am so i'll get the set of all minus 2 by 3 comma minus 2 by 3 comma 1 span of this right yes ma'am or maybe i'll write it so that it's clear z z z where z can be anything so this is span of minus 2 by 3 minus 2 by 3 1 yes ma'am so this is going to give me third option minus 2z minus 2z 3z i'll just multiply this by 3 yes, or it is at this stage so i can multiply it by 3 right so what if they ask for union so union need not be a subspace right comma 3z so this is what is the first question so we have found the intersection of these two spaces and then if m is the dimension of v1 and n is the dimension of v2 okay that is done we know the dimensions what is the dimension of v1 2 ma'am 2 because yes. uh, i can uh, get rid of x alone i need yes. to know what is y and z in terms of y and z yeah uh, similarly v2 dimension is 2 v3 dimension is 2 what is the dimension of v1 intersection v2 1 1 because i just need to know z once I know Z, I know everything. So, with all this, you can calculate the dimension. Okay, that is fine. Now, what is the which of the following denotes the maximum rate of change of the temperature T at the point of intersection of the three tangent planes? So, first I need to find the point of intersection of the three tangent planes, right? 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3. One two 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 one two 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 one nine nine nine. So if we quickly solve, I guess twenty seven by five or something is the point of intersection. X Y Z is twenty seven by five. Is that right? Nine minus. At 9 by 5, 9 by 5, 9 by 5. Ah, yeah, 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 that is it. Two is it correct, ma'am? 9 by 5, 9 by 5, 9 yeah, by 5. Yeah, yeah, yes, that. 2 minus 4 is minus 2, 1 minus 4 is minus 3, 9 minus 18 is minus 9. So now this becomes 1, 2, 2, 9, 0, 1, 2 by 3, 3. 0 minus 2 plus 2 is 0 minus 3 plus 4 by 3 minus 9 plus 5 uh, minus 9 plus 4 is 5 by minus 5 by 3 minus 9 plus 9 by no 18 so that's 9 are we getting minus 9 by 5? Minus 9 plus, oh, that's a minus, no? Let me just rewrite. 2, 4 by 3, oh, this one, 3, okay, fine. 6. This vector has to be added with minus 2, minus 3 and minus 9. So the answer here is minus 3, correct? So z is 9 by 5. Yes, ma'am. Z is 9 by 5. Uh -huh. So All once right. z is 9 by 5, y is 3 minus 2 by 3 into 9 by 5. So 15 minus 6 is 9 by 5. 
x is again 9 by 5, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So the point of intersection is 9 by 5, 9 by 5, 9 by 5. For those who didn't understand what calculations I did, I just solved three equations using Gaussian elimination. I'm doing some half the things in mind and I'm writing half the things. In an ordinary, in an ordinary way also, we can solve the equation. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I always prefer this. So I means I've got used to this. So yes, no, I just did. This. And now here, here in this particular case, the terms are getting cancelled, ma'am. Oh, okay. You see here, here we are getting as soon as we subtract. Oh, okay. we are getting x equal to y equal to z. Oh, great. Fine. Yes, okay. So we have found the point of intersection and then we had to find the maximum rate of change of temperature. So the temperature was e power x plus y plus z. T was e power x plus y plus z. What is the maximum rate of change of temperature? Is it uh, maximum? Gradient. Uh -huh. Norm of gradient. Of gradient, norm right? of gradient. Yeah. So norm of e power x plus y plus z comma e power x plus y plus z comma e power x plus y plus z right this is tx this is ty this is tz right so at the point of intersection so we have to calculate at 9 by 5 9 by 5 9 by 5 right Maximum directional derivative at the point of intersection. So that's going to give me e power. I can take 1, 1, 1, right? e power 27 by 5 into this, right? Agreed? Yes, ma'am. Or I'll write it as e power. Yes, you are substituting no, ma'am. 9 by 5. Ah, yeah. Okay. X plus okay. y plus z. So 9 by 5 plus 9 by 5 plus 9 by 5. Sure, sure. e power 27 by 5. I can write this as e power 27 by 5 into the vector 1, 1, 1, right? Yes, ma'am. So when I have, uh, when I'm trying to find norm, if I have a constant, it comes out as mod of that constant, right? But this is already e power something is already positive. So it comes out like this norm of 1, 1, 1 is 1 by root 3. Oh, norm of 1, 1, 1 is root 3, right? Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So that is the correct answer. Okay. And then what are we doing? Which of the following options are true? T is a linear function, T is a continuous function, Tx is not a continuous function, T of Cx, Cy, Cz. Ah, that you can do, right? That portion you can do, right? Yes, ma'am. We got it, ma'am. Yeah. This is not a linear function. It's an exponential function. Actually, huh. 22 and 23, I felt that they were disjoint question to the question above. Because, um, because okay. since it was solvable through general, ah, by generally right. seeing the function as well. Hmm. So this was just to bring in continuity of uh, multivariable functions, I guess. Suppose on approaching the point 1, 2, 3, temperature is approaching to e power a, what is the value of a? Ah, that you can do, right? You just have to find it's the limit. So is this clear now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ma yes, ma'am. And that affine space problem, uh, the 18th question, that I guess I mean, last solved question, huh, last, last question. Last question, we have to simply put the values of x, y, z. Yeah, you just have to find limit of p. Limit as uh, limit x, y, z goes to 1, 2, 3 of t of x, comma y, comma z. T of x comma y comma z, this is a continuous function, right? Everywhere. Yes. Monotonic. So you just have to put.
I understood everything from this question. Uh, but uh, I was unable to connect to ex plus y plus z with uh, this root function. Root function means? Means that 9 oh, x y z. Okay. Means uh. I understood that 9 x y z computation everything. Uh. And I was unable to connect what was e, e x y z uh, serving the purpose for because it was talking te about temperatures first up. Yeah. And so then, what is what is f of x comma y is equal to square root of nine minus x squared minus y squared? Yeah, it is three it's variable. It's sphere, right? Sphere, z yes. is equal to z squared is nine minus x squared minus y squared. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 9, right? Okay, this is sphere. Huh. On the sphere, a temperature function is defined. Means there's a sphere. Two, two separate functions are given, no? Ah, the temperature on the sphere. That is what is given, yes. right? Huh. So you have a sphere and then maybe you're heating up that sphere, for example. And the temperature at any point on the sphere is given by the function e power x plus y plus z. And then you're asked for all those questions. What is the maximum rate of change of uh, uh, the temperature? Means what is the direction in which there is maximum change and all that? Yeah, questions. Huh. Thank you. Okay, so could you solve the 18th question? No, man. Everything else was simple? That 18th one repeatedly we are getting the doubt, ma'am. Before the exam quiz 2 we revised. Ah. And again it seems to be something new. But this question is a different one, right? Yeah, but, but based on that affine means something uh, like... Ah. Uh, you just need to write down what is happening. That's all. Which of the following functions can represent a map from A2 to A1? Oh, is there A to A1 already given? Oh. Yeah. Comprehension is there, ma'am. Okay. So, what, can you quickly tell me what is A1, A2? A1 is given by the Fn space. No, no. Have you already calculated? Can you look at the solution? I'll just look at the solution. Oh, no, ma'am. I'm doing, ma'am. We'll directly take that from the solution. Because that part you can calculate, right? Yes, yes ma'am. What is dimension? Means dimension is rank of matrix root. Or is it dimension is different? Dimension is number of elements in basis. Yeah, it is same as rank of matrix one. No. Rank of a matrix is a different number. You don't have dimension of a matrix. You have only rank, rank of a matrix. For a matrix, you cannot, dimension means it's the order of the matrix, you say, but that's not, sometimes you call it dimension. What exactly are you looking for? Where did this dimension pop up? Previous question, I answered oh. di dimensions using that rank. No, no, no. <laughs> you have to first find V1 and V2. V1 and V2 are vector subspaces. Right. So first you have to find those vector subspaces. V1 and V2 are that easy, one right? One matrix would be same. Only one coefficient one is zero. Means v equal to zero. Okay, so what are you telling? I was telling that uh, it was dimension. I misconcepted dimension using the rank of matrix. Oh. So, so I just verified whether huh. dimension and rank are same or not. No. The rank of a matrix is the number of non zero element, uh, rows in whatever that row echelon form. But you don't have something called as dimension of a matrix. Here you're asked for dimension of some subspace. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, question number uh, uh, okay A1 A2 is um uh, A1 
x1 minus x3 minus x3 x3 okay v1 is span of minus 1 minus 1 1 v2 is span of 1 no minus 1 1 what about x2 x2 is also independent okay fine is this correct A1 and A2 be the affine spaces defined by the solution space of the system of linear equations. So you're going to get infinitely many solutions. Yeah, complete mock solution is there on the portal, right? Chidanand. It's there in that mock, mock tests and quizzes in that you have mock n term solution. Uh, I don't think it's complete, ma'am. It's only till up till question 12. No, no. The numbering there is different. Means concept-wise questions. The sub-questions are not numbered in the exact same order, but all questions are solved. Uh, ma'am, just a quick question. Like, uh, are we done with all the revision topics and now only the doubt-solving session is there or what? Is there any need to discuss uh, critical points and all that? All those are pretty simple, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I guess we'll just do this problem and then maybe do some projection. Someone had asked for. Okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, there is one problem which needs to be defined or uh, described in this week 9 to 11, which okay. is maximum, maxima, and minima of surface area. Means volume is given hmm. and surface area, maximum surface area, minimum surface area. Okay, we'll formulate that problem also. We'll yeah. finish this one. Please recap. Ha. Huh. Okay. So, is this uh, correct? Did someone try calculating this? Yes, ma'am. It is correct. Okay. One, minus one, minus one, minus one. Yeah, correct. It is correct. Okay. So, what is it? One minus one minus one, one or minus, minus one, one minus one, one. Ah. And okay. Minus one zero one one zero one zero. Okay, so the next question asks for which of the following functions can represent a map from A2 to A1. Okay, oh, we need A2. Can you tell me what is that number A2? Two x plus y plus two z is equal to zero, ma'am. This is A2, is it? Yes, ma'am. 2x plus 2y? No, 2x plus y plus 2z. Is equal to 0. 0. Uh, okay, fine. Oh, is equal to 0? Or? Subs A1, A2, A3 are uh, not uh, vector uh, subspaces, ma'am. Okay. It is not affine spaces, I believe. Oh, A1 is V1, is it? Yes, ma'am. A2 okay. is V2. Oh. Um, okay, fine. Uh, what is A1? X plus 2Y plus 2Z. And then? A3 is? No, there is only A1. A1 and A2 are affine uh, spaces, huh? not subspace. So what is that equation? Equal to 9, 9, ma'am. Oh, no, no. This is... You, this is uh, equal to 9, 9 is that problem, no? The one that we just solved. Yeah. Next to comprehension. This is question number 18. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. Question, ma no, question sorry. number 18, ma'am. Okay, let's see if we can just deal with V1, V2. Maybe the final vector we can take from uh, the solution. Okay, fine. So we have a map from A2 to A1. 
okay there is an affine map from a2 to a1 correspond to the linear transformation which of the following can represent a map from a2 to a1 corresponding to the linear transformation between their corresponding subspaces whose matrix representation is given by this so what are the corresponding subspaces for these two if i take a linear transformation where from where to where will it be v2 to v1 right the underlying subspace for yes. the affine space a2 is v2 and the underlying subspace for a1 is v1 so we have a linear transformation from v2 to v1 whose matrix representation is minus 1 0 with respect to the ordered basis 1 0 minus 1 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 and 1 1 minus 1 okay with respect to this ordered basis this is the matrix of the linear transformation so how will i find out the linear transformation transformation of 1 0 1 0 ha v2 basis for v2 you will take 1 0 minus 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 minus 1 and 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 i guess this is equal to minus 1 into cot minus 1 into 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 this is 0 0 into 1 1 minus 1 so this is minus 1 minus 1 1 and this is 0 0 0 okay so this is t now i know t on a basis for v2 can i find out t yes ma'am yeah so t of x comma y comma z i have to find out first of all v2 is two dimensional right this one yes ma'am yes so maybe we will first express one of the variables in terms of the other two variables say i have x times 1 0 minus 1 plus y times 0 1 0 so x is equal to z right x is equal to minus z ma'am minus z ma'am oh fine x yes. is equal to minus z Okay, I'll write it in terms of x and y. So I'll put z is equal to minus x. Minus x, yes, ma'am. So the, this is t of x comma y comma minus x. This is what I have to find out, right? Yes, ma'am. So yes, I will express x comma y comma minus x as alpha times one comma zero comma minus one plus beta times zero comma one comma zero in terms of the basis vectors for v two. the domain these are elements in v2 does that make sense yes, oh that i calculated from here you would have calculated v2 as some subspace no so that is this v2 is set of all x comma y comma z such that z is equal to minus x means this is the equation you would have got i wrote this down from the solution directly span of this this so i was unable to solve this that's why i asked this you would have got from the equation when you solve those three equations no from there you would have got x plus z is equal to 0 probably that is what you would have got when you solve the equations okay we'll do that so for now okay let's assume v2 is known so this is how i'm going to express alpha comma beta comma minus alpha is this so alpha is x and beta is y right yes ma'am so x comma y comma minus x is x times 1 0 minus 1 plus y times 0 1 0 so t of x comma y comma minus x is going to be t of this that is x times t of 1 comma 0 comma minus 1 
plus y times t of 0 comma 1 comma 0. t of 0 comma 1 comma 0 is 0. This is 0. 1 0 minus 1 is minus 1 minus 1 1. Minus minus 1 minus 1 1. So this is minus x minus x x. So this is the linear transformation. T of x comma y comma z is equal to minus x comma minus x comma x. So what will the affine map be? You can choose from the options, right? Yes, ma'am. So 2, 0, 1 lies in the affine space A2. And uh, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 0 lies in the affine space A1. So with that, you just have to add that number, whatever that number is, and then you'll get the affine mapping. So let's quickly calculate A2. 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 3, 0, 3. 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 3, 0, 3, 2, 4, 6. So this when I solve, I'm going to get 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the solution set of this x plus z is equal to 2. A2 is the set of all points x comma y comma z satisfying this condition. So V2 is the set of all points satisfying x plus z is equal to 0. Now is it clear how we got V2? Yes ma'am. Yes. So this was how we got z equal to 6. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so this can be written as x comma y comma minus x where x and y are anything. From this I will get that basis span of 1, 0, minus 1 and 0, 1, 0. Now is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then what question 12? Someone asked for question 12. Ah, oh, this one. So question 12. You are asked for the tangent line at the point 101 1 in the direction of 111 1 is parallel to the line. Ma'am, you just have said uh, that you will uh, put huh. it in this uh, that discourse. This was, yeah. So for someone who asked question 12, you just find the equation of the tangent line first and then from there you can conclude this. The parametric form of the tangent. Uh, oh, yeah, this is parametric form. Yes. X of t is equal to a plus t times u1, where u1 is the first component of uh, the direction, unit vector, all that, right? We have discussed. You can just go back and check. In this video only, we have discussed a little while ago. This one, this portion. Yes, ma'am. Fine. And. Uh, ma'am, that x of t and y of t are like the x and y coordinates of the, the tangent line, ma'am. The yeah, the tangent line is in 3D, right? So you want x comma y comma z, right? Yes, ma'am. Huh, so that's got from this x of t. T is because it's I'm using a generator. I'm using something which is going to generate that line. Like when I put, uh, when I have the line y is equal to x, I can write it as t comma t, right? This line, I can write it as the set of all points t comma t, right? So this is going to help me generate all the points. I mean, generate that line, right? Whenever I change the value of t, I'm going to get all points on this line. 
So that is the parameter. I'm converting uh, a set with two variables into a set with one variable. I'm parameterizing the equation. Fine. Um, huh. Um, uh, uh, in, uh, in a 3D plane, huh. uh, if uh, you consider for a constant uh, unit vector u1 u2 let's say Con uh, constant unit vector uh. Uh, u1 u2 hmm? uh, in the graph at any point the tangent line uh, in the direction of u1 and u2 are parallel right the graph can you repeat that uh, in the graph, uh. Uh, suppose we have a function. Okay. In the graph, uh, mm. uh, that at any point, let's say a comma b, in the direction of uh, u1 comma u2 unit mm. vector, mm. the tangent lines are going to be parallel. Is this statement correct or not? What is the second tangent line? One tangent line is the one that passes through A comma B in the direction U1, yes, U2. Uh, uh, well. Another another tangent line is uh, suppose let's say D comma E at point D comma E, but in the uh. direction of U1 comma U2. No, but that's going to be a different point, no? So so the. Say yes, ma'am. Different point, but uh, direction. Say is, for example, uh, this. So say this is the direction. And when I change the point in the direction, the tangent line exists at that point. First of mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Again, which question is it actually no, it's related to answer. that uh, to question number 12 mock question okay okay yeah we'll discuss oh, this yes there. yes yes ma'am because uh, u1 u2 may be same but uh, the directional derivative may be different at that mm. point Oh yeah, so the slope will yes. be different, right? Yes. But if if directional derivative is also same, then those are parallel, I think. Oh, so then this is also sorted, right? Then. Yes, ma'am. F of a comma b that need not be the same, then, right? But but here it's same. Oh, here, here. Oh oh. In this okay. question, it is same. Hmm. Okay. So I fine. think yes, hmm. I think three is also correct option. Option okay, three. I'll I'll think about it. I'll discuss and then put it on this course. Okay, okay. okay. Means even if that is not correct, even if three is not correct, I'll put the reason why three is not correct. Okay, 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 ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, I have some doubts from activity question nine point three. Okay, what is the doubt? Uh, Excuse me, ma'am. Is the session done, ma'am? Someone wanted uh, projections, but you can leave. It means you can leave any time. And anyway, the recording is always going to be there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Question number five and six. Uh, 9.3, is it? Three, yes, ma'am. Okay. Question five. Ma'am, will we have a session tomorrow? No, 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 no. Thankfully, this went on well. So, this will be the last session. Oh, okay, ma'am. And, ma'am, what about Hessian matrices? Uh, do you really want to discuss that? I mean, uh, not just for me, if other people want that. No, it's just a set of formulas, no? So I guess you can just uh, look at that and. Uh... Uh, yeah, that will work. Okay, ma'am. Fine. Ma'am, build up. Oh, someone asked me about that surface area thing, right? Ma'am, I was just about to remind you that huh. surface area yeah, will be that. helpful for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so what is it out in 9.3 question 5? Ma'am, uh, uh, why minus 0 0.6 is not answer? If the directional derivative at the point uh, this in the direction u1, u2. I got point... uh, plus 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.6 as answer. Directional derivative of x sine y. x 
sin y at the point 1 0 in the direction u1 u2 is 0 0.8 so that's sin y comma x cos y at 1 0 so 0 comma 1 in the direction u1 u2 uh, okay by square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared those are unit vector ma'am it's given u1 and u2 in the direction of a unit vector u1 u2 okay yes you need not uh, yeah so u2 is 0 0.8 right yes ma'am then and uh, u1 one square uh, u1 square plus u2 square is 1 because ah. it's unit vector U2 squared is 1. So U1 squared is 1 minus root of ma'am. U1 is equal to root of 1 minus 0 0.8. Ma yeah, but uh, you can take square both sides. Ah, okay. 1 minus 0 0.8 ma'am. Ah, okay. 0.64, yes. 0 .8. Yeah, that is the answer. So U1 is U1 can be minus uh, 0. Point... Oh. U1 is U1 squared is this. Yes, U1 is 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6, ma'am. The square uh, of 0. Uh, minus 0. 0.6 can also be right because. Ah, uh, plus or minus. Yes. Okay, but is something else getting violated because of that? Okay, okay. But, we need to uh, check that, right? But minus uh, this is 0. into 0. 0. So I don't think it will get. If you put minus uh, 0. 0.6 in the vector, you will get mm -hmm. the same uh, 0. 0.8 at, as a directional derivative. Mm. Remember, but 1, 0 is a positive direction. So we should take 0. 0.6 only. Means that's I. Yes, it's not given anywhere. It's positive. So one zero is any point, and this is any direction, right? Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Has, huh? U U one U two can be any direction. Right. Ma'am, square root of a number can only be positive, no, ma'am. It cannot be negative. No, no. Uh, square root of four is plus or minus two, no? No, ma'am. It's only two, no, ma'am. We are taking minus only positive minus, square roots. Is minus it? 2 but, times minus 2 is 4. But square root of 4 is always 2 only. We take the positive can, square root. Yes. Hmm. You can do, ma'am, uh, u1 square minus uh, 0 0.6, the whole square is equal to 0. Then you can put the formula a plus b a minus b is equal to 0. From hmm. that, you can get u1 is equal to minus 0 0.6. I think zero minus zero point six can be the answer. Yeah, that also yes. should be correct. Okay, and ma'am, uh, question number six also. One second. This is a q nine point three. Question number five. Okay, and question six. What is the problem? I found that uh, this doesn't exist. The limit, I think. Uh, which limit? Oh, the directional derivative doesn't Find the directional exist. Derivative of f Can you solve that? x here? squared y x power 4 plus y squared. Squared y by x power 4 plus y squared and 0. And then root 3 by 2, 1 by 2. It is true that it doesn't exist, but we can find the values anyway. No, if it doesn't exist, then how can you find the value? No, it is just saying find the derivative at this point. It is not talking about whether it is existing or not. No, if it you... does not exist, it means you cannot find the value, no? But, but uh, this... you can approach uh, that... Uh, uh... Ma from a line in one of the equal. sample questions which you did mm. at one point it gave one by two so limit way although it, 
it is not unique but no if it does not unique it does not exist you cannot assume that to be the uh, yes sir uh, yeah. actually i think uh, there is a typo in this question instead of x square y in the numerator part if it is x y by x to the power 4 plus y square then uh, uh, i got uh, then i am getting the answer as 1.5 which is correct no we'll just uh, finish this yes ma'am even i to try this problem 3 by 9 or something 3 squared 9 by 4 4 4s are 16 plus y squared x squared by 4 divided by h so cube okay i can cancel a squared so that's 3 by 8 divided by h into 9 by 16 x squared plus 1 by 4 this is working, right? It exists, no? 3 by 8 by 1 by 4. Three by two. Oh, okay, okay. Huh. Excuse me, ma'am. Huh. Why don't we directly substitute the value in the given function? Because but, at 0, 0, it is 0 by 0, no? Uh, yes, ma'am, but we are finding it root 3 by 2. and one No, no, this is the direction. This is u1, u2. The point is 0, 0. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll do the surface, surface volume. What was it? Surface integral. Minimum or maximum surface area with a given volume. Okay. So, upload revision session 3. It was not even recorded. It was in Hindi, so it was not recorded. Is it a mock question, the surface thing? It was in graded assignment, ma'am. Graded oh. assignment 11, and I think it was in Yes, ma'am, it was in mock test too. Mock as well, it was there. Okay. Search for that. Ninth question of mock. Okay. And a porter four. wants to make a rectangular box of volume 15 cubic units. Okay. So we want a cube or cuboid. Rectangular box. Okay. A cuboid. Same matter. So what is it? Length into breadth into height is 15. Such that its total surface area is minimum. Okay, surface area is 2 times LB plus BH plus LH. This has to be minimum. Okay. Find the value of X cube plus Y cube. Oh, dimensions are X, Y, Z. Okay, fine. So we'll convert it to X, Y, Z. You just have to get rid of one of the variables, right? You can write z is equal to 15 by x, y. You are allowed to do this because the box cannot have dimension 0. So with this, you can convert it into a function of one vari two variables, right? x, y plus y into 15 by x, y plus x into 15 by x, y. So that's 2 times xy plus 15 by x plus 15 by y. So this is f of x comma y. fx is 2 times y minus 15 by x squared. This has to be equal to 0. fy is 2 times x minus 15 by y squared. This has to be equal to 0. So y has to be 15 by x squared. So x squared y has to be 15. Or okay, we'll keep y as 15 by x squared. From here we get 
x is 15 by y squared. So we get x is 15 by 15 by x squared whole squared, right? 15 by 15 into 15 into x squared. Ah, do we get x is equal to 0? No, right? Ma'am, it was coming nine. of cube root of 15. Means answer was asked in cube, so it directly came. Oh, no, we can subtract now, ma'am. Or else we can write uh, x square y is equal to 15, x y square is also 15. Square. From these two, when you ah. cross multiply, x, is, x y square is 15. Ah. x square y is also 15. Oh, from there also we can solve. Yes. x squared y is We can equate x y is x y squared and uh, bringing to one side x y common. Because ah. x, x is equal to y. Huh. Because x and y cannot, cannot be, be 0. Yeah. Oh, OK. So we directly get, OK, fine. From here we'll get then x cube is 15. So y cube is 15. Fine. So x cube plus y cube will be 30. Fine. So is this clear? Is this clear? Oh, yes. OK. And then someone had asked projection, Ma right? Uh, ah, yes. I have it out from activity question 10.2. Okay. What is the doubt? Question number five, ma'am. Question five. Okay. Ah. Ma'am, how to solve this? So we are looking for a parallel line, which means that t two t minus root three by root five t that has to be the same, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah, so that is same only for one of the options, I guess. T, 2T. Oh, for two of the options, it is same. Okay. And it has to pass through the point 1, comma minus 1. So that Z, it, have, it should first have 1, comma minus 1. And then the Z of T should have the coefficient as, uh, means that constant term has to be F of 1, comma minus 1. Which question is it? Ma'am, how? Because it's AQ not mentioned that uh, it's not mentioned that uh, it has to be a tangent line as at the point one comma minus one. No, but that line has to pass through that point, right? Yes, ma'am. It will pass through that point, but and that point is also lie on the curve on the f of x y. Is my screen visible? No, ma'am. Hmm. Is it visible now? Yes, ma'am, it is. OK. So this is the question we are talking about. Ah. So I want 1 comma minus 1 comma f of 1 comma minus 1 to lie on this line, right? Yes, ma'am. So option 3 and 4 is ruled out. It's either 1 or 2. So for what value of t are you telling me that 1 comma minus 1 comma f of 1 comma 1 will lie on this line? You want 1 plus t to be equal to 1, which means t has to be equal to 0. So y of t has to be minus 1. No, this coefficient. How, ma'am? Minus 1? No, 1 comma minus 1 has to lie in that line, right? Yes. Yes, That is given. Ah, so 1 comma minus 1 does not even lie in this line I am saying for option 2. 1 comma minus 1 comma f of 1 comma minus 1. Okay, yeah. yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, but 
okay ma'am got it it uh, need not be a tangent line at the point 1 comma minus 1 yeah it has to pass through 1 comma minus 1 okay 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 ma'am fine then what projections what is the doubted projection what what is the doubt what was the doubt in projection okay if the person who is asked is not there then uh, will you share the pdf yes so shall we close there are no more questions yes ma'am Okay, so all the very best. Thank you, ma'am. The paper.